Hey y'all, hey, it's JJ Conway. Welcome to Building Wealth Together, where our goal is to help you walk in abundance and leave a legacy. It's Mindset Monday, where we take the best teachings on mindset, motivation, and leadership and apply them to your life. This helps you get past the past and grow forward into abundance. Let's get into it. We're talking today about change the world. Many of you might remember uh, two weeks ago, we did a opening class on the book, Change Your World by John Maxwell. And there's a corresponding series of masterminds. The first one kicks off tomorrow morning. I've got another group that kicks off Monday nights, next Monday, uh, not this Monday, next Monday. And I'm really excited about this idea that we can really change your world. What I'm going to read for you what I'm going to read for you right here is is our hmm, what I'm going to read for you are some stories of what we're going to learn about in the book, and then I'm going to show you a chart that really blew my mind. And I hope you'll stick with me at least to see the chart. All right. So he says in here, the very opening words of the, of chapter one is that we're so glad you're here. This book is written for you if you want to change the world, if you want to change your world, and so many of us get discouraged. I'll just throw my own two cents in here real quick. So many of us get to so discouraged because we look at the greater world and we look at all the toxicity and we look at everything going on and we look at how and we feel so helpless to change anything in the world. But I'm going to tell you today that you have the opportunity to change your world. And by changing your world, that will make all of the difference for you and your future generations. So let's look at the stories of some of the people we're going to look at as we go through this book. And, and again, we're going to do this book over the Mindset Mondays for the uh, the next couple of weeks. We've also got masterminds. If you are interested in those masterminds, okay? If you're interested in those masterminds, you can go to rebrand.ly slash CYW21 and you can register completely free, okay? Not trying to sell you anything. I was trying to sell you uh, Saturday. I was absolutely trying to sell you because I needed to sell some stuff so I could make a, make a, a thing, <laughs> make a goal for something, right? <laughs> But I wasn't playing around today. I'm, this is this is going to help you change your world. So we're going to meet Missy, a volunteer to school who was asked to share uh, her apple discovered hungry children, packed food into backpacks in her garage, and started a program that today feeds 87,000 kids. Missy changed her world. We're going to also learn about Brian, who took his childhood trauma and pain and used it to build a safe place for Hope, dignity, and unconditional love. I'm going to read that again because my screen blanked out. And for those of you listening to on the podcast, I'm broadcasting this on video in my Building Wealth Together Facebook group. So you should be able to go there and watch the video if you like. All right. This is Brian who built a safe place for sexually abused children so they could live with hope, dignity, and unconditional love. Brian is changing his world. We're going to also learn about Ethan, a third grader who put his hand over his heart and asked, do you ever feel deep down here that you want to help make a difference? He's just beginning to change his world. You're going to be changed if you believe that you can make a change in yourself. That is all it takes, y'all, to change your world. You're going to also learn about Charlie, a high school dropout with no sense of purpose in her life, who spent five months working with children in the slums of Africa and said, I came home a totally radically changed person. She was changed. And now Charlie is changing her world. You're going to learn about Renee, a man in Mexico who searched for his brother's murderer for 10 years so he could exact revenge, but learned the value of forgiveness at transformation tables, chose to forgive the man, and changed his family's history. Renee was changed, and his life is getting so much better. You're going to learn about Yamila, a timid young woman from Guatemala who gained the courage and confidence to take a better job when she adopted a more positive attitude and now helps others in the village surrounding her home. Yolima has changed and is now helping others change their world. There's many, many more stories here that I could go into, but I, I hope that you're seeing the common thread in all of these. Actually, there's one more that I really do want to highlight real quick, okay? You're gonna learn about you're gonna learn about Roy. 
Roy learned his son wanted to take his life because he was being bullied. How many of you have parents had kids who were being bullied? I know I did. I remember when my son was being bullied. And I remember when everything that I thought I should do about it and everything I thought he should do about it was at cross purposes with what my faith leaders were telling me, with what other parents were telling me, with what the school was telling me. And I was like, none of y'all are solving this problem of my child getting beat up every day. Roy wanted to help his son. And while doing so, he realized that other parents and kids needed help. So he started an organization that now helps millions of kids in 42 states. He is part of a movement that is changing the country. One kid, one parent, one family at a time. And what I hope you take away from these stories is that it is very, very possible to change your world. And I would submit to you today, I would submit to you today that there's, that there's really very little else we can change other than ourselves. But all we have to change to change our world is to change ourselves. Ah, oh, this is good stuff, y'all. You see, because for so long, I was looking to things that I couldn't change. I was trying, I was trying to change this, and I was trying to change that. I was trying to become more like this person. I was trying to become more like that person. You know, there were times where I would get angry that I wasn't a blue-eyed, blonde-haired woman because I felt like life would have been so much easier. There were times I was mad that I wasn't born a man because I felt like life would have been so much easier. Those are probably not very good examples in today's world. <laughs> <laughs> but 40 years ago, you couldn't change those things. You were born who you were born 40 years ago, right? Like today you have more options and, I, and I'm not, and we're not going to talk about that today, but, but, but when I was coming along, you, you were where you were, you were born into the family you were born into. And in my case, I was born out of wedlock. And so I, I remember being on the school ground and back then people cared about that, especially among military circles. And I remember being, being, being teased mercilessly for the status of my parents when I was born and for the fact that I appear in, in my, my mom and dad's wedding pictures. And, and I don't even know how the other kids knew that. I knew when we moved from, Ger from, from Japan to Germany, I made sure I wasn't going to tell any of the other kids that because I didn't like to be called those names. That's why I cringe during Hamilton. I, I love Hamilton, but man, when they say that word, I'm just like, mm, it brings back all that old stuff, right? But I was trying to change this and I wanted to change that. And I was angry that I couldn't change those things. But I had no idea back then that I didn't need to change those things. They are part of who we are. They're a part of our journey. They're a part of making us the strong person that we are today. And so, and so I, I wasted a lot of years. I wasted a lot of years and a lot of energy, angry that I couldn't change the things I thought had to change in order to have a fulfilling and productive and happy life. And at the end of the day, what I discovered is what really needed to change was this heart of mine. And a lot of you out there, you're like the people in this book whose stories I just summarized, right? And we're going to dig more into their stories over the next couple of weeks. But, but you had something happen where you identified a need. And you said, well, I can't change everything, but I can change one thing. Or maybe you said, I can't change everything, so I'm not even gonna bother trying to change the one thing that I can change. I wanna encourage you today to take that first step. There are other parents who have struggled through what you've struggled through. There are other kids today who've struggled through what you're struggling through. There are other teachers, other professionals, other technicians, other moms, other dads, other fill in the blank. The things that you've gone through that you wished you could have had somebody to help guide you, those are things, those are needs that exist in the economy today. And whether you're looking to do it for profit or whether you're looking to do it for personal benefit, there's still a need. So when we look into, as, as we, as we continue to look, I'm going to show you this, I'm going to show you this graph. Okay. He goes into talking about how, how things need to change and how mental health is, how mental health issues are on the rise and that a lot of the violence that's a result of the mental health issues that are growing costs $13.6 trillion 
dollars a year. Okay. And so that's pretty alarming. But let me tell you what else was really alarming to me. And the reason it was alarming to me is because this is not what I see in my perspective. This is not what I see in my world. Okay. He, he shows a chart. I'm going to forward this up here to you. He shows a chart of extreme poverty. And this extreme poverty, 1800, okay, 1800, you can see there that 85% of people in the 1800s in our country were living in poverty. Okay, so, so when they when they create that, when they create this chart, okay, when they create this chart, they, they, they kind of have to, they kind of have to extrapolate back to what the dollar was worth back then, okay, but it's the equivalent of living on less than $2 a day. All right. That's extreme poverty, less than $2 a day. All right. And so then you look, you look through the 1900s and then right here you get to, what is that? 1966, 1966, where that other dot is. All right. That's 1966. And then you see this super sharp decline. And so what we find then that this data, this is what the data shows. The data shows, the data shows that extreme poverty continues to go down. That oh no 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 I'm sorry I said I said our country this is the world population forgive me this is the world po that's even worse y'all that is even worse y'all um, by their calculations as of this month over 50 percent of the world's population or some 3.8 billion people live in households with enough discretionary expenditure to be called middle class or rich about the same number of people are living in households that are poor or vulnerable to poverty. Okay, so poor or vulnerable. Okay, um, then you look at then you look at this tipping point. Now this now this chart goes only to 2017. All right, but then they say in September 2018. So that's after the chart marks a global tipping point. After this, for the first time ever, the poor and vulnerable will no longer be a majority in the world. And I bet a lot of you are looking around like the poor and the vulnerable are all I ever see, right? So we're not just talking about the 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 the, the poor on poverty, but we're talking about the people who any one instance can slip them into poverty. You know, most American, I think it's like seventy two percent of American households don't have a thousand dollars in the bank to cover emergencies. Your tire busts, your day is ruined, and your month, and possibly your year. And that's why I work so tirelessly to help people get out of debt and build wealth. And the very first thing we do after being intentional about the life we want to create is we get together that savings account so we can be insulated from the impact of life because it only takes one medical condition. It only takes one big accident. It only takes one water main bursting. And then you not only have to replace the water main, but you got to replace the concrete that it was under, right? Ask me how I know. It only takes one car accident to wipe out your savings. Ask me how I know. It only takes an instant. And that's why we have to put things in place in our life. That's not the that's not the subject of the book, y'all. That's not the subject of the book, okay? But I'm a financial planner. You know, it's like being a preacher. Like, you can't even help it. It just comes out. But, you know, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And the spirit of the financial planner is subject to the financial planner. But I got enough of y'all on here that I'm going to say this. This is why we need to build some insulation in our lives. And why we need to live according to best practices that will help us weather these storms. But, but look at what he's saying here. Most of the people in the world, you can see how it's gone down. Now, this is abject poverty, okay? This is like $2 a day poverty. That's what this is. But they're saying 50% of the people in the world, uh, in as of September 2018, more than 50% of the people in the world would be considered middle class or rich. And, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up to you is because a lot of us don't see this in our world. And so when we look about how can we change our world, then the first thing we have to acknowledge is that our world is the viewpoint from which we've got to go. I'm not worrying right now about somebody over in Zimbabwe, which is okay to send money over there, right? But I'm looking around at my world and I'm thinking, what can I do in my world? Where are the needs in my world? Where are the where's the where's the change that I can make in my world? And it almost always comes back down to I gotta change something in here first. All right. You know, a lot of people wait for the government to do something. A lot of people wait for education, the healthcare, the, the sports. We think all the entertainment moguls should do something. You know, we, we even get mad at Facebook. Now, look, 
I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, it's just going to be a little rant. It's not going to be a full rant. Okay. It's just going to be a little rant, but you know, I get people complaining to me, oh, that Facebook, they make me so mad and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you do realize that Facebook's entire business model is figure out what they want to see and give them more of it. So if you hover your mouse or you click your finger on a particular thing on Facebook, that's what tells Facebook what to show you more of. So if you're clicking on all the incendiary, all the stuff that gets you fired up, <laughs> if you're clicking on all that stuff, Facebook isn't going to keep showing you the sweet little kitten pictures because they have determined you're not going to click on those. Okay. So, so, so what our world is really a product of what's going on in our world. Then it's up to us to change that. And I'm going to show you how, oh my goodness. I love this. Okay. We got an exercise in here. We're going to skip over that because we're going to save that for the round table meeting. Okay. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing I want you to walk away from today with is that we have to have hope for ourselves. And the first lesson that we're going to cover tomorrow morning, if you join that round table or that we're going to cover Monday night, if you join Monday nights, next Monday night, not this night, but next Monday night is hope and having hope and hope is a powerful thing when it is placed in the right thing. And here's, here's the sad part about the human existence right now. Most of us have no belief in ourselves. Most of us have no belief in ourselves. We have spent so much of our lives lying to ourselves that we don't even know who we are anymore. We don't even know what we want. We don't know what we want out of life. We think we know, but if we sit down and examine what we're seeking, we'll find that much of what we're seeking in life is the value set of other people or what other people say we should be pursuing. You know, as a financial planner, I get this a lot when a young couple who just got married comes to me and they're like, well, we're going to go buy a house next week. And I'm like, you don't need to buy a house. You don't, you don't know. You don't even know each other yet. You don't need to be saddled down with the, the rigors of owning a house. You need to, you know, and financially, it's just not a good idea to get to buy a house right after you got married, you know, unless you, you know, unless you've lived there all your life and you know the land and you're getting, you know, you've got the savings and you're getting a good deal. But generally speaking, most newlyweds who come to me. But, but they don't really know that they want a house. What they know is somebody in their life has been drilling into their head. Don't you dare waste your money paying rent for somebody else and making somebody else rich. Well, let me tell you, you buy the wrong house on the wrong street, you're going to have a lot more to worry about than whether or not you would have made somebody else rich paying rent because a house without money to upkeep it and a house without time to upkeep it and a house without energy to upkeep it. That is a that is a despair and a money pit waiting to happen. And I don't know about y'all, but when I first got married, I really didn't want to expend any energy on the house. I had other things to expend my energy on. <laughs> That's the whole point of getting married, y'all. Anyway, all right. So uh, we, but we don't have hope in ourselves, and we don't have hope in ourselves because we are basically living a lot of our lives trying to do and be what everybody else says we should do and be. And even when we find that fulfilling, like sometimes that's fulfilling, you know, like I, I didn't think it would be fulfilling to buy nice bags and nice shoes, but you know, now that I have them, I find it very fulfilling. <laughs> you know, I found it very, very fulfilling when I, when I reached out to Maurice at the uh, Christian Louboutin in, in Dallas. And I said, ah, I need, I need a replacement for this. And he sent it right away. Like just, you know, the customer service. I said, oh, I could get very used to this, you know? Um, so, so I'm not saying don't ever, you know, don't automatically dismiss everything that somebody else might say you have to have. I think I am so thankful now um, for the young lady who was like, you really need to elevate your brand because <laughs> she was right. Right. But, but, but stop for a second and think about what are the things that are truly important to you and how many of those things have fallen by the wayside because you're trying to be what somebody else values rather than being what would really make your heart sing. So that's one reason. That's one reason we really don't believe in ourselves. And another reason that we really don't believe in ourselves and that we don't have any hope in ourselves is we've been lying to ourselves for a long time. And some of you have been with me for a little while. You've heard this example, but I know you know it's true, right? And that is we have been telling ourselves we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And then we don't do that for so long that we don't even believe our own selves when we say we're going to make a change. OK, how many of us participated in the get seven hours of sleep, uh, get seven hours a night of sleep uh, challenge for January? That was our challenge for January. Right. I didn't. 
I, I mean, I did better. I did better than I normally do because I knew I needed to report back to the group. <laughs> but, but I still didn't. Because you know what? I, I, you know, it's not something I'm not. I'm not something I'm used to. But there's so many other areas of our lives, and it take it took me so long to develop the discipline that I'm going to give myself a command and I'm going to follow it. And so the examples that I like to give, how many times do we say we're going to wake up first? We're going to wake up while everybody else is still asleep. We're going to do devotion. We're going to work out. We're going to prep this and that for our families. And then we're going to, you know, make sure our calendar and blah, 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 blah. And then every day we hit snooze, 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 snooze. Now, I don't hit snooze anymore. On a very rare occasion, I will. But, but you know, how many of us have done that for years? So you say, okay, I got a new year's resolution. I'm going to make something with this business. I've got a dream on my heart and I am going to make it happen. And do we, and you know what your subconscious says when you say it again, your subconscious says, oh yeah, I heard that one before wasted a whole lot of time, energy, and money on something that she didn't even follow through with. You know what? We're going to shut this down. Now we're going to nip this in the bud. So we don't have to waste all this time, energy, and money just to break our promise to ourselves yet again. And that's what a lot of us are having to overcome. So if you wonder why there's this self-sabotage or why we have these doubting thoughts or these limiting self-beliefs, some of it stems from the fact that we have told ourselves for years that we ourselves cannot trust ourselves. But you can develop the ability to trust yourself. You absolutely, absolutely can. And these round tables that we're going to do as a part of Change Your World, they will show you how. I encourage you to go to the link at the, there at the bottom and sign up. It's a free mastermind and it's going to help you change your life, which is then going to reverberate out to changing your world. All right. So what are, what are the things that make people change? You know, like I'm saying some nice things and you know, I'm saying some nice things. Like we all know, we don't all know because there's a lot of things I didn't know, but, but there's a lot of things that we do know and we don't do what we do know. Right. So if you're, if you're not in our self image class, this is something we, we, we covering in our self image class. When we want to make a change, a lot of times we get overwhelmed. Like, Oh my goodness, this is too much. Right. And so I encourage people to make a sphere with their fingers and to consider the things inside the sphere of all the things you possibly could do. And out of all the things you possibly could do to make your life better, we barely even do a fingertip specs worth inside the circle. Okay. Just, just a little fingertip. We don't even do that. I mean, really, if we be honest with ourselves, there are so many other things that we could do. So many opportunities we could pursue. So many other phone calls we could make. So many other foods we shouldn't eat, <laughs> so many other foods we could eat, you know, but you know what? I just don't feel like chopping up the celery. The bag of chips is right there, right? You know, um, actually my chip replacement uh, right now is green beans. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're a chip hound like I am, give that a try. It's a very nice crunch. Anyway, we, we look at, we're, we really only, we have a wealth of infinite opportunity inside the sphere of things we can change that we're not changing, we can do that we're not doing. But instead of doing any of that, we look at all the stuff outside of the sphere. And we look at this point way out here and we say, well, I'm never going to be a 6'2 model. So I'm just going to hang up trying to look good. Okay. Or, or, or we say, well, I'm, I'm never going to do, I'm never going to be quarterback for the, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. So I'm just not even going to bother playing any sports, right? We, 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 we say these things, but I'm not even asking you to try to be a size zero model or to try to be a quarterback for the football team. I'm asking you to look at what you can change in your sphere of influence. Okay. And so, so why is it, why is it that we don't change? Why is it for years that I knew, I knew corn wasn't good for me. You know, I knew corn wasn't good for me. And, and, um, Everybody always talks about eating corn healthy, right? And it's so it's so healthy, right? It's all natural. And like all those products that say they're all natural, but they're still making us fat. If you look at them, they got corn in them, corn syrup. Oh, oh man. Um, I gotta, I gotta find that picture for you. The, we were in the store Saturday and it said no high fructose corn syrup. And I was like, ooh, let me check this out, this syrup, because I normally buy maple syrup, but my son eats, he he eats a whole bottle in one sitting. And you know. I don't, that's expensive. So I pull this out, big letters, no high fructose corn syrup. Turn it over. What's the first ingredient? Corn syrup. 
Uh, as if the no high fructose makes it that much better, but it's still it's still junk that your body wasn't designed for, right? And so so I knew this from experiential, and then I think it was maybe about ten years ago where I read the Eat Right for Your Type book, and the Eat Right for Your Type book said two things that I had known that everybody else contradicted me at. For one, my blood type loves beef. Bring on the steak, baby. I do better on beef than I do on chicken, right? The other thing it said is stay away from corn. And I was like, I tried to tell everybody, right? But even knowing that, and even experientially knowing that, you know, you know what really finally motivated me? Because I love me some tortilla chips. Do you know what really finally motivated me? It's the first thing John Maxwell lists here on what makes people motivated to change. It wasn't the knowledge. It wasn't the personal satisfaction of being right. I knew I was good with beef. It's that people generally change only when they heard enough that they have no choice. <laughs> he says it a little nicer than I do. I had to change because I had this car accident and it siphoned away my future. So I thought, and it siphoned away my savings and it siphoned away so much, so much of what I thought was important for me. Okay. And so, um, and so for me, what I had to realize is that I had to make a change or I was never going to get my health and strength back. And, you know, making that change in my diet, you know, you know, a lot of people know, a lot of people know I cut out sugar between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, and, and we usually, I usually lose a few pounds. So instead of gaining weight at the end of the year, I, I lose weight at the end of the year. And, um, but this year I lost seven pounds and I was like, wow, well, I'm pretty sure it was because I started cutting out the corn and some of these other things that everybody else says is so healthy, but it's not. Um, uh, my uh, blood type, for those who are asking, was, is type B positive, right? So, so I, like, I like to think B for beef. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you can know something, but you're just going to do what everybody else does. You're going to do what tastes good, what feels good, what looks good, what's easy. Do you know how hard it is to find chips without potatoes and corn? I'm actually, we actually bought a bunch for the big game next week. And, um, and I'm going to do a taste test on all these different kinds of bean based or uh, root based chips so I can have my, my guacamole with chips, even though they're not tortilla chips, they're not corn chips. Okay. And so, you know, it, it, we've got to understand that a lot of times we only change when we hurt enough that we have to, my brain, my brain is like how I made my living. Right. And, and when my brain didn't work the way I needed it to work, I had to make a change. I had to make a change. I didn't want to be a vegetable for the rest of my life. I mean, I was, I'm, I'm older than I look y'all, but I was too old to be put out to pasture. And that's exactly what was happening to me because I was not getting better fast enough. Mm. My, my, my. Okay. And so, so, so people change when they hurt enough that they have to. All right. Another reason that people change is when they see enough that they are inspired to change. And I hope that something I've said today has helped you be inspired to make a change in your life. All right. Now, uh, people also change when they learn enough that we that they want to change okay and so that's the other thing with the brain stuff because when i i'll tell you what I, i've been doing this brain work now i haven't been perfect okay I, i'm i'm not cutting out all the wheat because i feel like cutting out sugar cutting out potatoes cutting out corn and cutting out dairy that is enough for right now okay <laughs> that is enough for right now but look at how good i look y'all <laughs> so it's worth it. But, um, uh, you know, but, 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 but I learned enough about brain biology that I was like, wait a second, I'm, I'm enhancing these results. There's clearly some issues. And I, I don't know yet if I'm going to share my brain scan results with you guys. I intended to, but when I saw them, I was like, wow, I got, I got some issues to overcome. I might, I might share them after I finished my therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the pride getting in the way. But 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 it's like, wait a second. There's clearly some damage that happened from the car accident, okay? You can see there's damage from either the car accident or the snowboarding. The doctor wasn't quite sure. But it's clear there's something's going on there or, or not that should be going on, right? And yes, I'm literally messed up in the brain. Um, but seriously. Uh, but the rest of it, it wasn't all because of the accident, okay? It wasn't all all because of the accident. Some of it was what I was eating. Some of it 
was me not drinking enough water. Some because you gotta water your brain. I didn't even know this. You gotta water your brain. And and I drink a, I drink water and herbal tea. Like I'm not a big well, you know, with with grad school and going to my doctoral program, I have incorporated more Mountain Dew Zero into my life. I will admit it. But you know, I'm not a big soda drinker. I'm not a sweet tea, big sweet tea drinker. I'm not any of that stuff. But 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 you know, I get tired of water, right? But but you gotta water your brain. I wasn't watering my brain. I wasn't sleeping enough. I wasn't getting I wasn't getting the proper nutrition to activate the centers of my brain that had the the post concussive syndrome. All of these things play together. When you learn enough, then it makes you want to do the change. I'm like, oh well, if I can control, you know, maybe I can't get 100% healing, but if I can get myself to 80%, hey, you know, I can do a lot more with 80% than most people do with their whole brain anyway. <laughs> yes, I am that vein. Okay, all right, let me move on because we're about out of time. The last one. The last one that he lists here that we're going to cover today, there's some more in the chapter. We'll get into it in the round table. Again, I encourage you to sign up for the round table. Okay. Uh, I encourage you to sign up for the round table. Uh, but the last one we're going to hear is people change when they receive enough that they are able to. Ooh, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means we got to dare to dream. We got to dare to dream. But we've also got to do. I forget who said it, but somebody said, uh, you know, the Lord, the Lord heard my prayers, but he really heard when I started praying with my feet. <laughs> Dreamers are many, but doers are very few, y'all. And we've got to take the change and make take the action and make the change that's required to change our world. And when we change our world, that change radiates out to all of the world around us. I want to thank those of you. I want to thank Evelyn and Candice, and, and I'm not sure who my other friend is. I think you meant Benito's on this one, um, but I want to thank you all for participating and commenting today. Uh, if you would like to participate, and again, it's free. If you want to participate in the free round tables, you go ahead and join me at rebrand.ly, CYW for Change Your World 21. You can choose either from the Tuesday mornings, which is starting tomorrow, or the Monday nights, which is starting next week. I'm JJ Conway. Thank you guys for being here on my little experiment. Normally we do these audio only, but y'all have encouraged me. I think we might keep up doing these on video, okay? And so I, I want to encourage you to come back. Let me know if you have any feedback. And if you have had, okay, if you have had any kind of brain injury, or anything that's causing some recovery, and you would like to talk about the experiences, I'm going to type something in here that you can use to book a quick chat with me. All right. Com slash JJ Conway slash uh, chat. Okay. I think it's chat. All right. Let's try that. And then you go ahead and book book some time because I want to encourage you that you can recover a lot faster than you think, than you think. Okay. Uh, we, the doctors, oh, it's not chat. It's quick. Okay. Let me fix that. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Um, you know, I thought, I thought it was going to get better. I thought it wasn't going to get better. You know, I, I was sitting here and I was working hard and I was doing everything the doctors were telling me to do and things were just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And, you know, it wasn't until I made some of these changes in the last year that things have started to get better. So I'll be happy to encourage you and sit with you and talk with you and help get you through this. Thank you all for being a part of this today. Y'all take care and be blessed. Love the podcast? Be sure to like, subscribe, and forward three friends. You can ask a question or take a life-changing class at buildingwealthtogether.com. Now go walk in abundance and leave a legacy.